Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. This is Kashif Kamran. Uh, I welcome you to yet another very important session, which is around the syllabus changes, which has been brought into the SPL exam starting from September 2021 exams onwards. Now, one of that change is in the syllabus area D2, which has brought a new model for risk management, which is known as four line of defense. And I want to discuss with you what exactly is a four line of defense model and how it helps in the modern risk management. I'm again repeating this model has been brought as the recent changes in the SBL syllabus applicable from September 21 exams onwards. Let's see what is the four line of defense and what is the need of discussing this in this session today. Now, the recent changes, uh, which I even covered in my previous YouTube session, uh, has introduced a change in the syllabus area D2. And in terms of the change in syllabus area D2, examiner has brought a new syllabus area, which you should be knowing. That is, the examining team expects from you that you apply the concept of assurance mapping. So you apply the concept of assurance mapping in terms of a modern risk management using the four line of defense. So what exactly is a four line of defense? How this four line of defense helps you with risk management? How this four line of defense help you with risk management in the short form RM and the four lines of defense helping you with the risk management and how you map assurance, what assurance you get out of the four lines of defense. So these four lines of defense and the assurance you get from the four lines. So we need to see the assurance mapping around the four lines of defense and we need to see how four lines of defense is now part of your modern risk management system. So if the examiner used the terminology uh, risk management and you want to apply something around risk management, you can use the fourth line of defense as a model in exam paper. Or ex if the examiner particularly used the terminology fourth line of defense, then you have to use this model. So either risk management, either assurance mapping, either uh, four line of defense. Examiner can use any terminology and you know, okay, this is the model I need to apply in. Let's start to understand what is a four line of defense model. Now, first of all, you should know that how important is risk management to understand the four line of defense and to understand the importance of this model. Risk management is a is fundamental to the success of organizations in every business sector. You should have this at the back of the mind that how important, how significant is risk management to an organization's success. Now we know risk management is like a holistic approach which starts from the top of the organization and have a trickle down effect right to the operational level of the organization. A risk management should be embedded at all the levels of the organization. And in, in order for an organization to be successful and an organization for the organization to increase the wealth of the shareholder, you should have an effective risk management system in place. Now, we know we are living in a complex world, which is full of uncertainties. So whatever the business does and whatever is the size of the business, it must manage risk. So any business of any size, we are living in an uncertain world. We are living in a world of uncertainties and we know risk is not static. Risk is dynamic. Risk is evolving. We know there are risks which comes from the external environment. There are risks which comes from your internal environment. Risk can be a threat. Risk can be a weakness. The management should take a holistic view of having a sound risk management system in place in the organization and any organization which manages risk is a successful organization which ultimately increase the wealth of the shareholder let's now understand what is the contribution of the four line of defense model to this effective risk management system risk is present in every corporate process activity and decision 
And that means that all the staff will have some responsibility for taking and controlling risk. Now, to understand the four line of defense, this is a very, very important bullet that you need to understand that risk is present in every process of the organization, in every activity of the organization, whether that process or activity is taking place at a strategic level, at a technical level, or at an operational level, whether that is a sales activity, whether that is a purchase activity, whether that is a human resource activity, whether that is any a routine activity taking place in the organization, any function of the organization, any department of the organization, any activity of the organization, there is a risk present in it. And that means that all the staff have some responsibility for taking and controlling risk. Now, whether you are a supervisor, you are a you are a manager, you are a line manager, whether you are a chief executive officer, you are a chief financial officer, you are an executive director, you are a non-executive director, you are an internal auditor, you have responsibility into this risk management system. Because when we say it is in every process, every process has a manager, every process has a staff. When we say it's part of every activity, that means every activity has a staff, every activity has a manager. When we say it's part of every decision, we know decisions uh, are taken by managers, decisions are taken by strategic management, decisions are even taken by operational management within their, within their uh, set limits. So risk is in every process, risk is in every activity, risk is in every decision. And for that, the staff which is associated with that process the staff which is associated with that activity and the staff which is associated with that decision is at the first line of defense, is at the first line of taking responsibility for identifying risk and for controlling risk. So the first line of defense for any risk management is the staff, is the management which is involved in the day-to-day -day process, in the day-to-day -day activity and in the day-to-day -day decisions so that is the first line of defense, the staff, the management, which is right at the front line, dealing with the day to day operation, dealing with the day to day conduct of the business, whether it is a process, it is an activity and it is a decision. They are the first one to take the responsibility of identifying the risk and of controlling the risk. Next, whatever the organization, whatever the organization's overarching approach to risk, these days, these day-to-day -day behaviors matters greatly. If an organization is to manage its own unique risk effectively, it must encourage a culture. It must encourage a culture where the staff are actively engaged in the management of risk and are coordinating their risk-taking and control decision. This is the key. Now, staff at every level of the organization should play a part in risk management. Staff at every level of the organization is involved in a process, in an activity, in a decision, and they should take responsibility for identifying risk, controlling risk, not just that, even coordinating, even communicating the risk, even informing the risk to the appropriate level of management in the organization. So there should be a culture in the organization where everyone knows the importance of risk management and everyone knows his or her responsibility into risk management, whether that staff member is at the top level or at the bottom level of the organization. Now we know the culture is something which is set from the top, strategic management. So the strategic management plays a very effective part in the robust risk management. They should set the tone, something coming from the top, the culture, they should enforce the culture and everyone within the organization uh, should know as part of his or her job description that I am responsible for identifying risk, for controlling risk, and even coordinating them with the appropriate levels of management. So that is very, very important. So risk management is like holistic. It covers the whole organization. The last one, before I show you the risk management, uh, the four lines of defense. When an organization achieves this state, 
good risk management practices are embedded. So when there is a culture where everyone knows his or her responsibility, when everyone knows it, the risk is present in every process, activity, and decision, when everyone knows I need to be responsible for identifying it and controlling it and coordinating with it, then that really embeds the risk management system in the organization. And that is excellent. The, the question, of course, is how to get there. How would you implement this effective risk management system? It all depends upon the tone from the top. It all depends upon the culture set from the top. So if you really want to have a risk management system embedded into your organization, it is very, very important that you should uh, realize the importance of risk management and you should realize how important it is to manage risk for being a successful organization. Now, this will now help you understand the four line of defense model. Now, when you look at the four line of defense model on your screen, the risk management in the center, and you can see the four lines going from down to top. The first line, the second line, the third line, and the fourth line. The first line we just discussed, the staff, functional or process management, the functional management, the process management, the management which is involved in the day-to-day -day activity, in the day-to-day -day process, in the day-to-day -day decisions are the one which is the level, which is the line one of the defense. So the first line of defense is the management which is involved in the activity, which is involved in the process which is involved in the decision. So like the sales team, like the purchasing team, like the payroll team, uh, like your factory workers, they are the first line of defense because they are the one who are involved in the day-to-day -day operation. So your line managers, your managers comes in the first line of defense because they interact with the functions, they interact with the activities, they interact with the process on a day-to-day -day basis. There are so many functions in the organization. There are so many processes in the organization which functions on a daily basis. And there are staff attached with those functions. There are managements attached with those functions. So they are the first line of defense. They should identify the risk. They should control the risk. And they should also coordinate, inform, communicate the risk to an appropriate level of management. We know there is a document known as a risk register in the organization, which documents every risk identified. So that's, that's where the responsibility of the functional management or the process management or the staff connected with the day-to-day -day function and process of the organization becomes very, very important. So the line one of the defense is the staff, is the management which is connected with the process function which involves, which goes on day-to-day -day basis. The line two of the defense right here is the management independent of the function. It is still the management, right? But the management is not involved in the function. So it could be some of your departments. Like we know in lots of organizations, uh, we have the risk management departments. In lots of uh, organizations, we have quality control departments. Uh, in lots of organizations, we have something like uh, risk committees. But management independent of the functions needs to have an oversight, needs to have an overview, needs to have a monitoring that uh, the functional management or the process management is doing what is expected of them. So that is, this is just a check and balance on the process management, on the functional management, that you have a management which is independent of the function, but it's still part of the organizational hierarchy. It is still part of the organizational structure. So it is a management which is independent of the function, right? but it's still part of the organizational hierarchy. So management independent of the function, if you have a risk management department, if you have a quality control department, or if you have something like a risk committee, which, uh, which takes an oversight of how things are being carried out or how effectively the functional or process management is playing their part in the line one of defense. So that is a check on the line one of defense. So number two, number three, internal auditor. The internal auditor or the internal audit department needs to put the line three of defense. They need to carry out extensive internal audit exercise right across the organizations to ensure that every function, every process, every control, every control activity, every policy of the organization is being met, adhered, 
and implement it. The internal auditor needs to find weaknesses, needs to find loopholes, need to communicate them, needs to coordinate with them. So internal auditor is putting the line three of defense by carrying out a holistic exercise of finding loopholes and weaknesses in the whole organizational risk management system. And the fourth one is the external auditor, providing uh, the fourth line of defense and providing an external assurance that the risk management system in the organization is robust. We know in lots of countries, uh, even in the Sabin Soxley, uh, which is a corporate governance in US, you, as an external auditor, you need to give assurance on the risk management. You need to give an, an, an extra assurance on risk management apart from the financial statement, apart from your opinion on the financial statement, you need to give an assurance on the risk management systems of the organization. So you are hired for an extra non-audit services and you need to, you need to review and uh, as an external auditor, the risk management system, you need to give an assurance on the risk management system to the shareholders. So four lines of defense, four levels of assurance mapping. The first is the staff, is the management, which is connected on a day-to-day -day basis with the function process of the activity. They are the one who needs to ensure that everything is uh, identified and controlled so that is the first assurance level that things are going in an orderly manner. The second assurance level comes from a management which is independent of the function and they keep an oversight that the line one is working fine. The third level of assurance is coming from the internal auditor and he's carrying out a holistic exercise of the whole organization, finding loopholes and weaknesses just to ensure that the level two and the level one is working fine. And then absolute assurance comes from, sorry, reasonable assurance comes from the external auditor uh, who conducts a holistic view of the line one, line two, and line three. So see, above every line, there is a check. So line one is checked by line two, line two is checked by line three, line three is checked by line four. So look at this four lines of defense. You, as, a, as a shareholder or as a stakeholder, you're getting a reasonable assurance that the risk management is embedded in the organization or risk management is, is effectively implemented in the organization. So that is the four lines of defense, nothing difficult. You know, this is like something very common. The management, the day-to-day -day management, the risk committees, the internal auditors being part of the risk management, but we, we have now brought it under a proper four line of defense system. So just let's recap the four line of defense, which we just covered. So if you forgot something, missed something, you can capture it from here. Line one, assurance comes from directly the one responsible for delivering specific objective or process. So the first assurance that things are in orderly manner, risk is controlled, is coming from the ones responsible for delivering a function or delivering a process. So anyone who is directly connected with delivering an activity, delivering a process is part of the process is part of the activity is the one who is giving the first assurance that things are in order so like a sales manager like a supervisor in the factory will give the first line of assurance that things are going as good as possible and we are following the policies of the organization line two is the assurance which is provided from it is provided from those responsible for separate separate from those responsible for delivery but not independent of the management chain. Someone from the management should provide the second level of assurance, but we need to understand that this management is part of the organizational management, but this management is not connected with the function. So like the non-executive directors, like the risk committee, they're part of the management structure, but they're not connected with the process. They're not connected with the activity like the, the like the risk management department the risk management department is a separate department not connected with an activity but just keep a check and balance on the overall risk management or like a quality control department is not connected with an activity but just keep a check that everything being done in the organization is as for quality so anyone who is independent of the function but yet again is part of the management chain it is part of the management hierarchy the third level of assurance comes from the internal auditor, the assurance coming from the internal auditor about the robustness of the system. And the fourth level of assurance is coming from the external bodies, like the external auditors or any external body. You can hire any external consultant. You can hire any external firm of risk management, which can provide you a service on assurance at 
how good the risk management system is. But yes, I think for our SPL paper, it could be more like an external consultant you must have hired in an exam paper. We know examiner is very fond of using the terminology external consultant or external auditor. So it could be an external consultant. It could be an external auditor providing you the fourth level of defense or the fourth line of defense and the assurance. So recap, line one is the assurance from anyone connected with the process. Line two is an assurance coming from the management independent of the process, but still management. Line three is coming from the internal auditor and fourth coming from external bodies like an external consultant or an auditor. So this is the modern risk management four line of defense. And you should ensure that these four lines of defense are absorbed in your mind. So this is not difficult because uh, you must have done it scattered in your risk syllabus of SPL. You know about external auditor's roles, you know about internal auditor's role, you know about the role of the risk committees, you know about the risk of the day-to-day -day management, but they have been brought into four lines of defense and how they contribute towards a robust risk management system in place. So please be clear about this. The last thing, each line of defense has a purpose and can provide robust assurance. You need to realize that each line has a purpose and contributes to assurance. There is no one line which provides better quality assurance than any other. So every line is important. You're gonna say, oh, line one is useless. The best assurance comes from line four and line three. No, every line is contributing and no line, we cannot say this line is better than this line. A range of assurance activities from across all lines of defense, will provide a rich and value add assurance pictures. Look at this last word. All four lines working together and in an effective manner will provide a rich and a value addition, will provide a rich and a value addition assurance. That is wonderful. So realize the importance of four lines of defense. Realize how important this is. This is not difficult for you to learn, apply, because this is very simple. And you must know about these things uh, scattered in your syllabus area D of risk. But let's bring them together in a four line of defense model. So every line contributes and all working together, all sync together, all synchronized together will bring the best assurance picture to the stakeholders and the shareholder. And that's what needed at the end of the day to make the organization successful. So this is the change which has been brought in the syllabus area D2. Four line of defense, assurance mapping. And this is what I try to cover in this session uh, about four line of defense in line with the syllabus changes. Uh, I wish you all a very best of luck for your upcoming exams, whether you're appearing in exams for September 21 or onwards, you should be familiar with this model. This is your tutor, Kashif Kamran, signing off from the session for line of defense. Have a nice day. Take care and study effectively. Goodbye. Allah Hafiz.